all blind and naked. And, and guys, honestly, these verses really hit home for us as well. Uh, you know, the scripture is absolutely timeless. Uh, I, mean, let's, I mean, let's take a look at it. I mean, Jesus is calling us, a, as a body of Christ, he's calling us, as the American church, he's calling us poor. I mean, but really, I mean, do you guys really think that we're poor? I mean, just the fact that you guys are sitting in this room going to this university makes you so much more rich than the rest of the world. I mean, what about blind? I mean, would anybody consider themselves blind? Probably not too many of us. I mean, here in the States, we have all the vision care, the health care, all the medical needs that we, that we could ever want. I mean, you know, we, it comes to the point where we can start relying on these medical advances to, to make our lives better, to make our lives longer. I mean, why do we need to trust God? We have medicine, we have surgery, you know, we don't, we don't need to trust God. What about, what about naked? Would that describe anybody here? Gosh, I hope not. Um, I, mean, I mean, I mean, just look at us. Like, I mean, we're wearing nice clothes. I mean, especially when it's starting to get colder out, we have coats and jackets and pants. And so, I mean, that's not really describing. That's not what we, how we would think of ourselves. What about wretched and miserable? Uh, I mean, does that sound like any of you here? And I mean, I'm not talking about like you're wretched and miserable because you finished your project late or something. I'm talking about like spiritually wretched and miserable. I mean, are you ever persecuted for your faith? I mean, is any, do you ever feel wretched because somebody's persecuting you for your faith? Guys, as the American church, we are too comfortable. I mean, honestly, guys, God needs to come before the desires of this world. God needs to come before our pursuit of money. God needs to come before our comfort. Guys, God needs to come before our extracurriculars. God needs to come before our studies. I mean, God often takes the back seat to school. I mean, you're talking about the creator of the universe after your psychology paper. Is your design project really more important than God? I mean, if you're radically in love with someone, wouldn't you just spend 20 minutes, start studying for that history exam 20 minutes later just to spend some time with them? I mean, by, by spending time with God first, you're saying, God, I trust you that even though I'm taking 20 minutes right now when I could be studying, I'm trusting you that this is still going to get done. Really, all these things of the world blind us and distract us from our first true love, which should be God. So if God is really this, our desire, we need to pursue him with all of who we are. Uh, take a look at verse 18. Verse 18 says, So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by the fire, then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. An ointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. That is uh, this is all the stuff that we are trying to pursue. You know, we're trying to be, to be rich and to be able to see and to have clothes. And God is going to give that to us. But the thing is that we need to put him first. That way it can come in his plan, how God designed it, and how God had planned out for our lives before we were even born. I mean, ultimately... You know, God plans to make us rich. Now, it might not be in money, it may be in happiness or rich relationships. God's giving us these white garments so we won't be shamed by our nakedness, you know. He's giving us this righteousness to put on. And he's giving us the ointment for our eyes so we can see the world around us for what it really is. Let's move on to verse 19 now. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Okay, this is basically God's reasoning for why he's telling us all this. Jesus' is reasoning. I mean, he just gets done kicking our butts from being mediocre Christians, and he said, you know, I do this because I love you. And that's true, God does love us. And so, this is, so he tells us what to do. He tells us to be diligent, which means act now. Don't wait on this, act now, and turn from your indifference. Turn from your stagnant faith. Turn from your, from your relationship that's just dead and not growing, and turn toward God. So verses 20 and 21, uh, to wrap up, are going to give us the choice and then the prize or the reward for this choice. Uh, verse 20 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Basically saying, if we have this right relationship with God, then we will be victorious, and we will be able to sit with Jesus on his throne for eternity, guys. Um, I mean, it, it says God, it, it says that Jesus stands at the door and knocks. I mean, this is saying that God desires us. He desires this right relationship with us. 
Guys, if you don't have that relationship with Christ, you know, take that first step and you know, accept Christ as your Lord and repent of your sin and turn toward God. I mean, if you've never done this before, you know, talk to me afterwards or talk to somebody on JSO or University Ministries or any of your RAs, anybody on Red Light. They would absolutely love to talk to you about this. And um, for those of you that have put your faith in God, if this, all this imagery of being lukewarm and not on fire for God describes you, okay, the, the, the main point of this whole verse, the main point of Francis Chan's whole book is that if you are lukewarm in your faith, you are not a true believer. You are not saved. You will not be with the Father in eternity. And, and that's really the truth that comes out of Scripture. I mean, if you don't believe me, and I encourage you not to just take me for my word, but open up this book. Uh, I mean, read the Gospels, you know, like you've never read them before, with, with no prior, um, you know, thoughts of what it's going to say in your head. Guys just, guys, just read it for yourselves and see if Jesus is okay with, you know, with us just, you know, kind of silently and slowly and, you know, being really um, stagnant in our relationship with him. I mean, if this describes you, don't leave this building without repenting and running after God with all you have. Because, guys, honestly, your eternity depends on it. So I, I just want to leave you with this quote from um, Crazy Love. It's from the chapter, Serving Left Orders to a Holy God. And, and basically it says, A relationship with God is like a river. If you're not feverly swimming <laughs> upstream towards God, then you are being swept downstream away from God. And, and so what that's telling us is, guys, we have to pursue God, because if we don't pursue Him, we're going to be uh, drifting away from Him. And so I'd just like to leave you with that imagery and just be thinking about that. And I will go ahead and close this in prayer and you guys can get out of here. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you just for being here this morning, God, for your, for your presence, God. I just thank you so much for everything that you're doing on this campus, Lord. And, and I pray that you would really um, just really speak to us, God, and, and that we could just be thinking about these things, God, assessing our relationship with you, God. I pray that you would um, just continue to discipline us and rebuke us because you love us, Lord. And I pray that uh, all of this discipline would result in a right relationship with you, God, and an eternal relationship with you. God, I thank you for all these students. God, I pray that you would be with us um, as we go out from here today, wherever we go, Lord. And I just uh, glorify your precious name, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you.